Hi there! If you are anything like me, and you spend hours on YouTube watching 3D printing videos, you must have seen a few of these amazing time lapses. This is something that I've been wanting to replicate for a while as well, but without an expensive DSLR camera. And I would like to integrate the camera setup into my printer. So in this video, I am going to show you how I built my custom time lapse setup, or even call it a studio. It's all based on my printer the artillery sidewinder and requires a Raspberry Pi. However, you could easily apply the same idea to a different printer as long as it is running Octoprint. So let's get started. First of all, we should start with a good camera and I will be replacing this cheap webcam I've used so far to monitor my prints with the Raspberry Pi high quality camera and I paired it with the official wide angle lens and it can be directly connected to the Raspberry Pi using a ribbon cable like this. Although I'll be using a longer one for this build. Of course, any decent video will require good lighting and therefore I will be adding two of these affordable video lights, which set me back about 15 euros each. These lights come with a white temperature color mode and have outstanding brightness for their size. Also, they have an RGB color mode so they are quite versatile, though I don't know if I'll really be using that, but it might be fun to experiment with. Especially on prints with white filament, I could imagine this could give a nice effect to the print. I've included their gimbal mounts as well, which are a bit bulky, but they function good enough to do their job. Now, let me show you how I'm planning to connect all this gear to the printer. I wanted to sort of integrate everything onto the printer so I can easily move the whole thing around. So therefore I've designed this part in Fusion, which connects to the aluminum extrusion of my Y-axis with two M4 bolts and some T-nuts. In order to mount the camera and the lights, I have created three cold shoe mounts on the top and the sides, which uh, allow for easy mounting of the ball heads, which will connect to the camera and the lights. Also, there is an extension piece, uh, which allows for an alternative viewpoint for the camera. And I might use that to get larger prints into view if necessary, or maybe it just looks better in general. And this can also be secured with an M4 bolt. Now for some neat cable management, I've created some internal channels. And this bottom one, uh, guides the ribbon cable that goes to the camera and the top one can guide the USB cable which powers and controls the lights and as you can see these internal channels go all the way down into this triangular part where you can exit the part and that is my design I'm happy with how this part turned out, although this is a redesign if I'm perfectly honest, but hey, it happens. I'm uh, trying to stick with the blue color scheme of my printer, but what I'm really eager to see is if those internal channels work as they should. Let's give it a try. With the ribbon cable first, should go in here, and that goes in surprisingly well. Wow. That feels good, that makes me happy. Awesome, let's, let's try the USB as well. Going like this. Wow, not bad. That works exactly like it should. That is perfect. Awesome. Now the 
there is one more thing I want to do before I can put it all together. I want to be able to trigger these lights on and off, so I am only using them when a photo is taken. If I couldn't control them and just have them on all the time, they would just be wasting energy 99% of the time, since we only take a photo once per layer. And well, who likes wasting energy? So my first idea was to just take out the battery and switch the USB-C input power on and off, as that would be very simple. And that seems to work okay-ish, but I find out that these lights will then always start up in the white light mode. So it wouldn't work with the RGB colors, which would be a shame. And I'm not 100% sure it will work reliably. So I've put the battery pack in and now I'm going to try and see if I can trigger the manual on off switch instead. After some trial and error, you can see that if we connect two of these pins of the manual switch, the light turns on, so we can use this to bypass the switch. So all I need to do is solder two wires to these pins and exit them through the switch cover hole. And after reassembling everything, you can see that if I connect these two wires, the light goes on. Now finally, everything will have to be wired up to the Raspberry Pi and that's why I've made this custom cable from my USB cable that I cut the connectors off. And the right hand side will be running outside to the lights and it consists of the uh, power cables, USB-C cables for the lights, which come with the lights by the way, and they are connected to the power wires of the USB cable. And here we have the cables that trigger the lights and they're soldered together to the data wires, so they will be uh, triggered simultaneously. But, and that's all going to be covered in some heat shrink to make it look nice. And on the other side, we have a DC-DC uh, converter, which powers the lights. And I did that because uh, each light draws one amp. And the Raspberry Pi could technically handle that, but it's only got a three amp supply itself, so I didn't want to take the risk and I put this uh, separate converter in there. So this side is a 24 volt input that goes to the main power supply of the printer. It's being dropped down to five volts and that uh, enters the USB cable. And then we have the two data wires left. And actually I found out I only need one because they are, the lights and the Raspberry Pi will all be connected to the same ground source. So uh, I found out if I pull this one signal to ground, then the lights will come on. So I will connect this to one of the GPIO headers, headers of the Raspberry Pi. All right, that's it. Now we're ready to install. No, actually we're not ready yet because I messed up a little. Uh, actually, we do need both wires. The thing is what I forgot to take into account is that if you run two amps through a wire, you get some voltage drop. And actually the ground at the lights is 0 0.2 amps uh, so 0 0.2 volts off from the ground at the Raspberry Pi and that made the whole thing un unreliable uh, So I reverted to using a relay But now everything works And we can control it all from the Octoprint interface That's nice and as a bonus we have a nice clicky sound from the relay So it's a long night, but I'm happy
All right, now it's time to configure the software on the Raspberry Pi. I'll be using, of course, the Octolabs plugin made by former Lurker. And he's got a great wiki to get you started on creating your own print profile and auto camera default settings. And I'll be covering my additional settings. So let's go to Octoprint, to the Octolabs tab, and your camera will need to be set up as a DSLR for the best quality. So that's what I did, and I'll show you my camera profile. So first of all, we need to create a snapshot script, which uh, is based on the DSLR script that is given in the wiki. And all we need to do is replace this call to gphoto by a call to raspi still. And you can add all your preferred settings for the camera in this path. Additionally, I've created these four custom scripts that are executed before and after the print starts and before and after every snapshot is taken uh, to control some custom settings. So before every print, we run this line of code that stops the streaming service uh, because the camera can only be accessed by one application at a time. And if I, we don't do this, the uh, call to Raspberry still will be blocked. And after the print, I'll turn it on again. So the downside of configuring as a DSLR is that you cannot monitor your prints, although you could also run this command in between snapshots, but that will add about eight seconds for every snapshot, which is uh, tricky with respect to printing. Now, before every snapshot, I want to turn the lights on, and that's what these lines of codes do. So I'll set GPI 20 as an output first, and then I'll toggle it high with this command. And after every snapshot, I'll do the opposite by toggling it low. So let me show you how to create such a script, taking the example of the before snapshot by logging into the Pi first, creating a new terminal. Then I'll cd into scripts, create the before snapshot file using nano, copy in this bit. The first line, by the way, is always necessary for a shell script. Press Ctrl O to save, enter. Ctrl X to close, and we'll see that the file has been created. Now, in order to make it executable, we need to run this line, and we can see that the line, the file name has become green, which means it's executable now. So, if we go back here, we can test it, and we'll see that the lights come on, and we can also turn them off again. Now we can save all that and we are ready to make some awesome time lapses. I am satisfied with how this project turned out. Everything is working as intended, the time lapses look nice, and also the RGB colors look better than I anticipated. Uh, the only problem I'm still having is the picture quality, which to be honest is uh, poorer than I was expecting. 
I can't really solve it by adjusting the lens. So I think it is a limitation of this three megapixel wide angle because the sensor itself should be capable of much more. Also, I still need to find some good freeware to reverse the fisheye effect of the wide angle lens. So if you have any thoughts about this, I would be very interested to hear about them in the comments. In case you have some recommendations, please let me know and also let me know what you think about this video in general. Finally, I will leave you with some footage for the extended mount, which I didn't really try out yet. And I wish you a, a very nice day.